So let's familiarize now the tables. Familiarize the tables. Table 7.1 speaks about the schedule of principal, accessory, and conditional use occupancy of building or structure. Uh, row 7 na tayo. Ha? Huh? Row 7 na tayo. So, table 7.1. Ano ang table 7.1? Schedule of principal, accessory, and conditional use, occupancy of buildings or structure. Huwag na natin uh, basahin yung una dyan. No? Yung una dyan, mayroon dyan nakalagay na uh, classification of occupancy na hindi naka-table. Kaya na natin yun. Ang natutukan natin yung naka-table na. Table 7.1. <laughs> Groupings lang naman yung sa una no? Dito yung table Importanteng malaman kung ano yung purpose ng table na ito no? Dapat nating malaman Bakit may principal Bakit may accessory Bakit may conditional Paano na-apply Alam niyo naman siguro to no at this uh, stage dapat alam niyo na to kung ano to. So classification and use or occupancy were group in the uh, different areas, group A, group A uh, division A1, etc. Oh, hindi ko na to isa-isahin. Gusto ko lang i-discuss how it works. The rest, basahin nyo na lang. Uh, unless apat na araw yung row 7 and 8 natin, then pwede natin isa-isahin. Uh, okay? So, nakikita nyo na ba dyan? Group A, Group B, hanggang sa Group J, no? J, di ba? So, tandaan nyo lang ano-ano yung nabilong sa mga group na yan. Kasi may mga may questions sa uh, board exam na anong group ba na belong yung ganito? So, yun lang naman yung mga basic questions sa board exam. But for purposes of project execution, may tinatawag tayong principal use, accessory use, and conditional. So ano-ano yung mga yun? Ibig sabihin, Pagka ikaw ay mayroong structures like indigenous family dwellings, single detached units, school or company stop housing, single family dwellings, churches or similar places of worship, church, rectories, community facilities and social centers, etc. Yan ay principal structures na pwedeng ilagay sa Division A1 or on the zoning classification that belongs to R1. Hindi ibig sabihin na R1 puro bahay lang ang nandyan. Okay? Ibig sabihin, parang gumawa ka ng isang village. Papisa na ngayon pinto para yung app ko natin. Ibig sabihin, Parang gagawa ka ng isang village and sinown mo siya as R1 pero hindi ibig sabihin na residential lang at puro single detached lang ang nandyan. Meron ka ring simbahan. Meron ka ring uh, school or company stop housing. That was allowed. No, that was allowed. Sir, sino nag-a-allow noon? Yung Sunni. Pag gumawa sila ng kanilang land use map at sinabi nilang itong area na to ay R1. Ibig sabihin, pwede ka rin magtayo ng structure na hindi siya bahay as long na siya ay principal structure that belongs to R1 classification ng isang city or municipality. Laro? Naintindihan? Nasusundan? Now, again, 
klaro na sa ating lahat na hindi lang residential ang pwedeng magkaroon na structure sa R1 zoning classification. Ngayon, may accessory. Ano yung accessory? Ha? Ano yung accessory? E example natin yung number 2 sa accessory. Okay? Number 2 sa accessory, paano siya ina-apply? Nag-board exam kayo. Naging arkitekto kayo ng June. Eh, wala kayong kakayahan pang mag-rent ng opisina sa commercial district. Gusto mo mag-opisina ka lang sa bahay ninyo. Allowed ba? The answer is yes. That belongs to accessory on the principal structure. So, ano sinasabi? Number two, pag binasa natin, auxiliary uses customarily conducted in dwellings and homes for the practice of one's profession such as offices of physician, surgeons, dentists, architects, engineers, and lawyers and other professionals provided that such professionals are members of the family residing in the premises provided further that more than three semi-professional assistants are employed at any time that in no case that more than 20% of the floor area of the building be used for said professional practice or home occupation for engaging an in-house business, etc. Ibig sabihin, pag mayroon kang bahay, pwede kang magkaroon ng auxiliary Uh, use or accessory structure which is an office space of not more than 20 square meter of the floor area of the residential building. Laro? Laro? Ha? Yan ang purpose ng accessory. Accessory siya sa principal structure. May limitation lang ang area. Kaya, pwede tayo mag-at-home office. Ha? Pwede tayo mag-at-home office. As long na 20 square meter lang ang pwedeng gawing opisina. Sabi niya lang, Sir, question. Eh, ang laki ng firm ko eh. Parang ubos yung floor area. O, din hindi ka na-allowed. Kasi kung malaking firm ka na pala, malaki na yung staff mo, ibig sabihin, capable ka na to rent a commercial space for your office then go out of your house. Pero kung nag-uumpisa ka pala, kalimbawa, no? solo practice ka, mayroon ka lang tatlong CAD operator, then 20 square meter of your house can be used as office space in the practice of profession. Taro? Ha? And so on and so forth. Yun lang. Gusto ko na maintindihan ninyo how it works. Paano may principal, paano may accessory, paano ang conditional. Okay, now, punta tayo sa conditional. Hey, sir, paano naman yung conditional? Pwede naman pala yun as accessory, bakit may conditional pa? Paano naman yun? Take note that practice of profession generally is not a business. And therefore, pwedeng hindi ka magkaroon ng business permit. Kaya naging conditional ang ibang structure dyan, like boarding houses, because that is a business. Conditional siya, subject to the grant of business permit. Then that will be a conditional structure to the principal structure. Laro? Naitindihan? Last? Example, uh, convenience stores. Oh, sa number three, sa conditional, convenience stores. Selling miscellaneous items provided that such stores shall not exceed 10% of the gross floor area of the dwelling unit and provided that no liquor shall be allowed for sale. So pwede kang maglagay ng tindahan sa bahay mo 
Conditional yon. Bakit conditional? Subject to business permit licenses. Pag binigyan ka ng business permit licenses, then you will, you will not allow to provide a store in your house. So, conditional siya. No? Kasi subject for government restrictions. Klaro na? Klaro? Ha? And of course, nabilong siya sa zoning classification of R1. Gets? Thumbs up nga sa mga nasa Zoom kung naintindihan natin. <coughs> Oh, sige, naiintindihan ha. Now, hindi ko na i-discuss yung iba pang division. Ha? The same lang naman ang application. Mag-focus na lang tayo doon sa zoning classification. Ha? Zoning classification. Now, we have zoning classification R1 to R5 for residential. Okay? Ano ang sinasabi ng R1? R1 is a low-rise or low density residential zone. Pag sinabing low density, R1 yon. Characterized mainly by single family, single detached dwelling with the usual community ancillary uses on a neighborhood scale. Kaya sinasabi dyan, with the usual community ancillary uses on a neighborhood scale. Kasi, There were structures listed in the principal column that is not residential but auxiliary to the community. Clear? Such as executive subdivisions and relatively exclusive residential communities which are not subdivisions. So, low rise or low density. Okay? Pagdating ng R2, pagdating ng R2, R2 is medium density. So, from R1, low density, R2, medium density, residential use. Characterized mainly as a low rise, single detached. Sa R1 ay, ano kanina sa R1? Single family dwelling, single detached dwelling. R2I, characterized as a low-rise single, single attached. Ang single detached lang dito, R1. Ha? Pagdating ng R2, single attached, duplex, or multi-level building structure to exclusive use as multiple family dwellings. This includes R2 structures within semi-exclusive subdivisions and semi-exclusive residential communities which are not subdivisions. And that divided into two, basic and maximum R2. Okay? Pag sinabi natin basic R2, single detached, a single attached or duplex building or structure. Ang kanyang building height limit, 1 to 3 story. Again, R2 basic, single attached or duplex. Ang building height limit ay 1 to 2 story in height. And ang use ay single family dwelling. And maximum R2, low-rise, multi-level building structure of from 3 to 5 story in height for use as multiple family dwelling units. So take note, in R2, ang kanyang building height limit sa, sa basic, up to 3 story lang. Pagdating sa maximum R2, up to 5 story. Laro? Gets? Ha? Gets na yan. Sabi ko sa inyo, kahit mag-exam kayo bukas eh. So, sa rule 7 and 8 lang.
Okay, next. R1, low density. R2, medium density. R3, high density. So, pag R3, characterized as low rise or medium rise building. Ang R2, low rise lang. No? Low rise lang. Sa R3, low rise or medium rise building. The same. May basic, may maximum. O, hindi ko nasama yung basic and maximum niya. No? Sa libro ninyo, basic or maximum, at ang basic ay 1, 2, 3, story. At ang maximum ay up to 12, story. No? Kung hindi ako nagkakamali. Up to 12, story. The same. Pag basic, single family, Pag maximum multiple family dwelling. Pag sinabi natin multiple family dwelling, maraming pamilya ang mag-occupy so maraming unit. Hindi lang siya single unit. No? Hindi ibig sabihin dito, marami kang pamilya. Diba yun? Ha? Pwede din. Sa'yo pwede. Sa amin hindi. <laughs> okay? Ayan, na, Okay? And then we have R4. Oh, hindi ko na nailagay. Nailagay ko dyan general, institutional, and commercial na. We have R4. Ano yung R4? Medium to high density row houses. Ha? Townhouses. Ayan, townhouses. Building height limit? Up to three. Three story. Then we have R5. Okay? R5. Condominium. Uh, R5. Condominium. Medium rise. Up to. Ilang story? Huh? Huh? 12 story. Up to 12 story. Tama? Ha? But, even though it is R5 called the video, if the occupancy is mixed use, that will be converted into C3. At pag nag C3 yan, you are not allowed up to 60 story. Clear? Ha? Clear tayo? Nasusundan? Huh? Then you have commercial one, light commercial, which the building height limit is one to three story. And then we have C2, medium commercial, up to five story, or three to five story. And then we have C3, metropolitan commercial. Which is, ito na yung na below sa Makati area, BGC, Eastwood, Ortigas, uh, yung mga high-rise. And then we have industrial and other occupancy. 